I've seen other institutions in other uh, cities uh, agree with employers on what the jobs are, understand the qualifications, and then work with those employers to create the curriculum that provides the qualified employees for those jobs. You should have people coming out of Madison Park or high schools in Boston ready for employment for the jobs that are just, need, just need high school diplomas. You should have people coming out of RCC and other community colleges ready for specific jobs that just require an associate's. Same for our four-year institutions. And so those kinds of pipelines need to be something that we invest in and make sure that the businesses that are here are able to stay, grow, and be healthy. Then we're attracting new businesses. We're saying, look what Boston can provide. We, pro we can provide a strong and qualified labor force. We put people to work. That should be Boston's new chant. Mm -hmm. And we should be saying it all over the country, all over the world, to other businesses who are looking for good places to come and make headquarters, make their home, and attract the businesses back. We put good people to work. Attract, attracting new businesses also means that we're investing in our entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And we know that you know all over our, our city and our neighborhoods that we have people that want to open businesses. As an entrepreneur myself, having opened a restaurant in Dorchester, I can tell you that it's not easy. The permitting process is, is convoluted. You're not sure where to start and stop. And so, you know, I propose uh, in, under my administration that, that we would have a, a, a customer-friendly response to those who want to be um, entrepreneurs. That, in fact, we should see that as that being really good to the city and become a partner with them. Not that they are um, um, have to nav navigate a maze, but that we're going to clarify that maze for them and really help them move through permitting and streamline that process. And then we need some creative capital. It allows for people to uh, try out ideas, pilot in our neighborhoods, have some facilities at their, at their uh, disposal, and, and make businesses work. Oftentimes, rent is a big problem. Mm -hmm. We've created incubator spaces in other parts of Boston. It's time to create incubator space in our neighborhoods. An incubator space would be a site that the city would have that would start new businesses, and the rent would be subsidized and allow that business to grow in a way that they can be sustainable and then find a new rent space in that neighborhood. We've subsidized rental spaces all over the city. There's no reason why we shouldn't be subsidizing rental space in our neighborhoods. Small businesses, the lifeline of the city, lifeline of our neighborhoods, we need to invest in all our neighborhoods and all the small businesses. Talk to me about the BRA, the new leadership of the BRA and affordable housing. Well, the BRA um, is, um, a topic of discussion all over the city. In general, um, the BRA needs a new cultural, new cu cultural shift. I have proposed um, in different forums uh, publicly that I would separate planning from development at the BRA. That I really do feel that planning should be under a city department, and the BRA as a quasi-public institution should focus on making the developments happen. Residents should engage the city in some transparent, really clear, and in many ways, highly localized planning process where the residents are leading the conversation. And then the planning product should be transparent and there. You know what we came up with as part of the decision-making process. The BRA should be charged in making the residents' vision a reality. And if anything is to be changed, it needs to come back to that process, that place where residents engage the city and what they want to see the city be and what they want to see um, happen and built. And, and splitting that up allows us to have a conversation that I think is far more transparent and accountable to resident voice. Um, the, the leadership of the BRA, in fact, I think with four billion, as I understand, dollars of, of development happening over the next five years, um, it, 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 Boston's growing. Boston is positioned to grow and, and that's a good thing. The question is at what cost and who's going to benefit. And, and uh, we need to make sure that more of our residents are taking advantage of the growth of the city and being able to uh, uh, be in place to grow with the city. And the, the second piece is that we're not displacing uh, people because there's not enough affordable housing. Far too often, we allow developers to buy out of affordability. Mm -hmm. Boston has an ordinance that 15% of its units in any development needs to be affordable. 
but we also allow, the BRA allows developers to buy out of those 15 percent uh, requirements and put that money in some fund that's going to create affordable housing somewhere. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that every neighborhood has its share of affordable housing, that we're not cr concentrating affordable housing in certain parts of the city, but that every income bracket has access to every part of the city that has been supported with public dollars. So that means that development should happen on site and we should have a uh, real commitment to affordable housing on site every part of the city. I'm going to throw a curveball at you right now and ask you about the arts. Where do you come down on the arts and the furtherance of a vibrant cultural presence in the city? Yeah, I'm really excited about the Out of the Box festi Festival that's happening right now. Uh, Ted Cutler and, and company have led, a, a, I think, a movement that I'd love to make a tradition in Boston. We, we, we have to invest in the arts in a way that arts, the arts and culture become part of the creative economy, that um, the innovation economy meets the creative economy. And that creative economy, though, is available to all the neighborhoods, that arts and access to arts is available all over the city, that in Dudley Square, the arts and culture are driving the small businesses, are driving the local economy. That, and it's not just based on tourism. Tourism is important. But I'm talking about ethnic foods. I'm talking about clothing. I'm talking about you know, live jazz bands. I'm talking about the kind of uh, vibrancy uh, that is based and uh, built on the diversity of the, of the city that will make us a special place, that will revitalize neighborhoods. Chicago is the model on this. Chicago's done this. They've done an excellent job in making sure that they have built on the natural assets of people who live in the different neighborhoods to help revitalize those neighborhoods. Now, it also means that we are providing access to neighborhoods. You know, we, we talk about public transit and making the city far more accessible so that whether you're biking, walking, or taking public transportation, you can get to our neighborhoods and you can get to the centers of where um, Steve Tompkins might be um, uh, reciting some poetry to us uh, that night. Uh, but, but, the, but the arts are important and, and public access to the arts is important. The way we do it is investing in arts leadership. Uh, we have a vibrant community in Boston and I'd love to set up a commission, a public commission that is um, taking Boston uh, to 2020, 2025, 2050 perhaps, with a bold vision for a new arts renaissance in the city. I believe we're not tapping into it. I think we have um, a, sleeping, a sleeping giant for our local economy, and we uh, have an ability to really make small businesses work better by uh, valuing the potential for the arts and a creative economy. So listen, we're just about out of time here. Um, I want you to look into that camera and take a minute or so to talk to the viewers and tell them why they should give John Barrows their vote for the next mayor of the city of Boston. I appreciate it. Thanks for all those who are watching. Um, my name's John Barrows and I would like to vote. And my track record speaks for itself. I'm the only candidate in this race that has helped to transform a section of this city and managed a complex public conversation that has developed in this, the, the section of Roxbury and North Dorchester called the Dudley Neighborhood in a way that we've developed and not displaced people by investing in market rate development and affordable housing. I'm the only candidate that's done that while decreasing crime and making sure that residents feel connected to each other and that we are solving problems with each other, but most importantly, investing in youth leadership. Um, through the Dudley Street Neighborhood Initiative, my last 13 years has been all about making sure that the schools in our neighborhood are quality schools and that the children in our neighborhood have the opportunities from birth to career to lead productive lives. As mayor, I would do the same. John, I want to thank you so very much for coming on. I know that you guys are all over the place, and we're hitting those dog days of summer, so I wish you the best of luck. We look forward to seeing you again before the, uh, the race is over, you know, and Godspeed to you, my brother. Thank you. Appreciate really it. appreciate you coming on. All right, folks, that's our show for today. We're out of here. We're out of time. We'll be back again next week. Until then, you take care of yourself. You make sure that you get up on the issues of importance to yourselves, your families, and your communities, because it really is 
hugely important who the next mayor of the city of Boston is going to be because it just means so many things to so many of us. Okay? Until we see you again, you take care. Peace.